Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Gerson's Garage, the channel where dead vehicles come back to life. At least we hope so. I hope everybody's been well since the last video. Um, when you're here, would you please hit the like and subscribe button? We're getting subscriptions, but I'd kind of like to see a little more likes or at least uh, maybe some comments on what we could be doing better. I'm fairly new at making videos. I mean, I've been on YouTube for a long time, but the, only made a video here and there on it. So, definitely any input will help uh, and it will be greatly appreciated. Now, today we're going to cover the gas tank removal of my 1976 Firebird formula. This will apply to other F bodies, mainly the Camaro, which is the Firebird's cousin. Uh, anywhere from 1970 and a half to 1981. These vehicles are all pretty much the same. There's differences in things like uh, evaporation controls, you know, extra lines, but pretty much the techniques are the same. Uh, they did change a little bit in the Firebirds when they went up to the converters and stuff in 1975. And of course, the later Rob uh, up to 81. So, let's get started on this job. Uh, I've already got the ground strap disconnected, which you want to make sure one of the first things you do. Uh, surprisingly, the ground strap came off without breaking the bolt, which is amazing on a car this old. So, without further eloquence, let's get started. Now you can see we got a uh, bolt for the strap here. And one over here. He's at the rear of the car. Here's your uh, ground strap, which I've already disconnected. That free oil is amazing stuff. It is one of the best penetrating oils I've ever used. Okay, now get back over to here. These are your fuel lines. And as you can see, I marked them. No, I'm not going to reuse them, but it's always good to know where they go. Uh, this is where I told you guys earlier, when you're doing a restoration, masking tape, diagrams, all that stuff comes in handy. That way you'll never lose your spot. Now what we're going to do is use our transmission jack over there to support the tank, because I'm doing this alone. Um, and while we're on that note, please practice uh, safe techniques, especially if you're doing this on jack stands or a lift. Lifts can be dangerous. Trust me, I got this one on the stops, and I, I always keep a little hydraulic pressure on the rams so we'll get to that in a second here okay now I told you about the two fuel lines here they're pretty dry rotted we're not going to try to save them so what we're just going to do we're just going to cut them well, <laughs> a little easier said than done but oh there's one If you don't have a set of these, get a pair, because I'll tell you, they are very handy for cutting tubing. It's a lot safer and a lot easier than using a knife. Okay, got both fuel lines disconnected. As you can see, we got our transmission jacks. Um, I put these blocks in here so these weren't resting on the gas tank and causing a dent. Because probably if this tank isn't too bad internally, I'm going to reuse it. I'll clean it up and paint it. Um, yeah, I know they make new gas tanks, but it's like a lot of other things made aftermarket, they're not as good as the original. If you can get away with using an original, then use an original, in my opinion. But we'll see how it looks. Um, that Hudson over there, that tank is unavailable. I used a POR kit on that back in 1997, and to this day it hasn't leaked. So if you do the prep right, you can save these gas tanks. So, we'll get to the um, a bullet here in a minute, and hopefully it'll drop out of there. And here's the fuel line on the other side. Like I said, I marked this one too. Ah, this one doesn't want to cut as easy. There it goes. Uh, when we pull the tank down, we'll have the sending unit wire too that's going to have to be unhooked, but we'll have to get the tank down first for that. Okay, let's give this a shot. Let's 
strap out of the way. Save our two bolts. Now I got the front half of the strap, or the rear half of the straps off. I'm trying to get the front off. I could just bend them, but I really don't want to do that. Unfortunately, with the muffler in place, you got to do this with a uh, gear wrench. But just want to tell you where these are. They're uh, 3 8 head on them. It's a little bit of a tight spot. I couldn't get my uh, impact up in there, but they're coming out all right. So once I get these out, we'll drop the gas tank down. Like I said, I could just bend the straps down out of the way, but I really hate distorting them. I mean, you can kind of get them back into shape, but uh, just over the years, I've learned the hard way not to do that if the straps are in good shape. So. All right, we're getting unhooked. Um, I couldn't get the straps out all the way, but I loose, took the bolts out. I loosened them up. I kind of got them out of the way. When we get the tank out, then we can worry about getting them out. I just didn't want them getting all bent up and distorted. So we're going to try lowering the tank. we got to remember there's a fill neck that goes up behind the license plate. So... Honestly, it's kind of common sense, but I'm just going to say it anyways. You want to make sure you get the gas drained out of a tank before you do this. <laughs> One of them little siphon pumps, you get a tractor supply, comes in a little handy, like you use for transfer and kerosene. They usually only work once or twice on gasoline because it very destroys the pump, but they do come in handy for that. Yeah, we've got to be careful. We don't want to go down without ripping that wire out, the sending unit. Let me have to jack into this round a little bit. The tank's pretty light because it has no fuel in it, so... Does have the order of gas. Considering this car has been on the road since 2005, that's pretty good. <laughs> Any gas that's left in there is probably pretty nasty, though. Okay, there's our sending unit wire. I'm gonna have to get up there with a the light. I'm going to take the camera and show you. Okay, as you can see the brown wire it goes to your sending unit and there's a stud that it kind of goes on. you got to kind of wiggle it and very gently pull it off. It's going to fight a little bit but unless it's really gunked up it should come off. Okay, we got that off. Now we should be able to get the tank all the way out. It's a little unbalanced in the jack, so we still got to be careful. 
Not heavy, just bulky. This doesn't mean I want to drop it on the floor. Beautiful. Like a glove. Okay. So that's the removal of a gas tank and a 1976 Pontiac Firebird. And like I said earlier in the introduction, it will apply to other F-body GM products, mainly the Camaro and other year Firebirds. So I'm going to get this tank off here. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you like it. I hope you subscribe to the channel. Until next time, please take care of yourself and God bless.